Brendan Kumagai, who is a data science intern at Stathletes and a master's in statistics student at Simon Fraser University, uh, where he's currently doing research on applications of statistics in sports. He was part of the winning team in last year's inaugural Big Data Cup and is currently in the finals of the 2022 NFL Big Data Bowl. Um, additionally, as part of this next presentation, we have Pascal Walters, uh, who is a computer vision engineer at Stathletes, researching ways to use computer vision techniques to advance hockey analytics. <laughs> He has an MASC in Systems Design Engineering and a BASC in Biomedical Engineering, both from the University of Waterloo. And I am going to share here. Just give me one second. And I guess a good intro too is that, you know, I'm in Florida for the PHF, so the, you know, hockey tournament down here. And for us, especially me, you know, I always want to support, um, you know, women's hockey and other leagues that are, you know, I think on the rise. So for us, it was really important to release data that was not only cool to work with, but that was like meaningful for the advancement of all hockey. Um, and I think it's something that we're all really passionate about as well. So I guess my two second pitch to uh, hearing some of the questions from last night, because I snuck on to listen was that, you know, if you're going to the website, uh, there's a register button. When you go to the type form and type out your information, you don't need to get a confirmation. It's just for us to be able to correspond with you so that when we get your final assignment, we match it to a name and we're able to uh, process that appropriately. So don't worry immediately. Um, you know, you're doing it right. If you're on this website, you click on the register, you'll see a red button, and then you're able to sign up, look through the timeline. We do have mentoring um, options too. We try to be very uh, helpful and open so that everyone can advance. And this is meant from anyone from beginner to as much advanced as you want. I mean, we got incredible. We saw Nick last night streaming. He submitted a paper that was awesome last year. So we've had anyone from people who've never worked with data at all, to industry experts uh, submit papers. And I think that's great for the field and great for everyone involved. So don't be shy, you know, look through the data, try to do things with it. We have it out there for research purposes. It's not perfect data. We didn't want it to be, we want this to be like a real world experience where you're merging different types of data sets, you're working in women's hockey and getting information that, you know, no one else has in the world right now. So it's something that's exciting, novel, but I think will also give you a good problem to learn skill sets that maybe are a bit more challenging um, without having that, you know, interesting question to do. So this year we're trying to focus on the power play. I heard last night too, we were talking about ideas of what to think about. I think number one, if you're a beginner, shots is a great place to start, right? Is there traffic? Where are people on shots when you're looking at the tracking lo location-based data? And then obviously passes. So I know Brennan did an awesome paper last year on passes. There's a lot in soccer too. Think about that if you want to do something more advanced. And then third, you know, whenever you're thinking of power play, you're always thinking of, is someone doing their assignment? Is there a system? Is there a tactic? What's going on? Are they on the half wall? Are they, you know, in position? Um, where are they getting shots from? So there's all sorts of different areas that you can dig into from, you know, this. And I think the women's national team, there's a lot of, um, you know, familiar names. So I think that makes it even more interesting to think of, you know, Canada winning this year. And the 2018 data that we had is an ode to the USA. So you have a bit of both in terms of what's going on. Um, and I think that makes it even more exciting to look at the changes in the game and to go, you know, think about some of those complex problems. But definitely if you're starting out, I think shots, traffic, positioning, where people are uh, is, you know, the simplest way to begin. So that's my little pitch on my ideas if I was uh, starting out or if I was a bit more advanced and, you know, really excited to see what everyone's coming up with because we definitely have a really good crew, strong group of judges, people that have signed up for mentoring. So you're really in for a treat, you know, if you really want to work uh, in sports analytics. And then an added bonus this year, because we've got so much demand is if you can send in your CV with your 
uh, final project. That would be awesome if you want to be included in a resume drop. Um, and we're just going to give that to, internally to the teams that are asking for it. And you can, you know, have that conversation as that goes and have a bit more visibility uh, outwards. So that was an added thing that I think will help uh, in terms of teams looking to hire and then also for people looking for jobs. So um, that's sort of my, the last of my pitch. I mean, I could talk all half an hour, Michael, but <laughs> I think I'm the opposite of Pascal and Brendan. So <laughs> um, I appreciate everyone here. And obviously Pascal, Brendan, all your work, Neil, Brad. I mean, there's like over 130 people on staff leads now. So everyone that's touched this data that's helped with some crazy ideas I've had to try to get uh, more women's hockey out there. Alyssa, Mike, uh, Carly, everyone involved, uh, really appreciated. So just excited to see this uh, come to fruition. And I know there's a, a nice tutorial here too, to, you know, start people off as well. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Shirley, Michael, and Allison, as always. Awesome. That was fantastic, Megan. Thank you for that. Uh, I'll just add um, two pieces. Uh, I think if you want to get um, additional information as we have it in term also um, in terms of uh, things like, um, you know, the mentoring opportunities uh, where you can be mentored um, by some of the, the great folks that we have helping us out um, with the Big Data Cup. Um, is to follow Megan on social media um, and also to register for the conference because we will send all that information out to um, the folks whose email we have. Uh, and second, I would just uh, highlight, you know, one of the bits of feedback that we got from last year's Big Data Cup, um, which was uh, that one of the participants who was not a finalist uh, emailed me a couple weeks after and said, they just solved this problem that had been a longstanding problem for their healthcare company with techniques that they used and learned uh, as part of the big data cop. So uh, that's a really, really great uh, testimonial um, for the stuff going on. Um, my job here uh, is to give you a little bit in the next couple of minutes, uh, a little bit about the, um, the details uh, of uh, the competition. And so let's see if I can do that. And back here. Awesome. So, um, yeah, again, big shout out to Stathletes uh, for helping us uh, prepare uh, these data. Um, so uh, last night we talked a little bit about the data. Just want to reiterate, there's really um, two main types of files there. Um, there's some play-by-play, -play, so that is event-based data. Uh, and then there's also some player tracking um, from women's international hockey uh, this year, so the 2022 Olympics. Um, and as Megan said, we're going to focus on special teams uh, and answering special teams questions. And so the player tracking uh, is, is focused there on special teams. Uh, if you watch Nick's presentation, there's a bunch of other data files that have information there. You're also welcome to bring in other public uh, data sets and add those um, to your analyses. Um, yeah, uh, again, I think we've said all this, focus on special teams there. Um, so the, the criteria um, that we're going to be using in terms of judging is going to be on originality, appropriateness of methodology, the importance of the outcome. So are these things actionable? Um, quality of your figures and your tables. So the data visualizations and those sort of communication pieces and then the overall quality um, of uh, the submission. We're going to have a two-stage process this year. Um, so we're going to have an initial review of submissions for completeness and quality. Um, and then once um, we've done that process, then we're going to have a complete review by two or more, I guess we'll call them experts. But these are mostly folks that work with NHL teams. Um, and the folks on these teams have generously given up their time um, and we ask them to uh, also give some constructive feedback uh, on the methodology. So it's an opportunity to learn and get some good feedback 
as well as potentially win the competition. Um, so the timeline here, uh, data was released yesterday. Um, we're gonna have some office hours and a HANIC. And for those that don't know, a HANIC is a hockey analytics night in Canada uh, that Megan hosts and that will allow um, folks to uh, see some more um, uh, analyses, I think, and some preliminary stuff there, but also an opportunity to ask some questions. And so the deadline uh, for those submissions will be May 15th. So that's approximately, I think, about nine weeks from now. Um, about two weeks later, we will announce the finalists. Uh, the finalists will have a chance to prepare a presentation. Um, and then the weekend of June 11th, and we've left that open because we expect there might be a hockey, uh, a Stanley Cup playoff game or two that weekend. So we will work around uh, those playoffs um, and we'll have uh, winners in both sort of a high school university level. Um, and then we will have a, an open competition there. Um, talked about getting the data. Um, so there again is the link for that. Um, and the link to the GitHub site should be there uh, on that page as well. Um, so to repeat their submission on the timeline um, there. So the virtual hours uh, and the mentoring that Megan talked about a little bit more here on that. Um, so again, these are hockey analytics experts, both inside teams and in the public sphere. Um, and you sign up and you can ask them questions about hockey, about special teams, get into some additional detail. Um, that availability will be in April and May. And as I said, details to come, they'll be emailed out to register participants. Uh, and I'm sure Megan uh, will mention that on her social media, as well as the social media of Allison and Shirley and myself. Um, prizes. Um, totaling up to 10,000 K Canadian um, this year and going to include plenty of swag from NHL, uh, from the NHL and from NHL teams. Uh, we were very lucky last year to have about 12 or 13 NHL teams generate um, hats and shirts. And you can see here on the slide, the, uh, the conference's home team of the Ottawa Senators. Uh, has generously donated um, some shirts and jerseys for this year's competition already. And so we are uh, very appreciative of that. And, and I'm sure we'll have more from, from other teams. Um, again, thanks to uh, the sponsors of the Big Data Cup, uh, Stathletes for providing um, the data, uh, the TD Management and Data Analytics Lab, which is part of the Rotman School of Management at the University of Toronto, uh, again, generously uh, contributed funds for our prizes, as did CANSI, so the Canadian Statistical Sciences Institute. Uh, Ottawa Senators and the NHL have already um, donated some swag for folks, uh, and so we anticipate that we will be getting more from other teams in the near future. So very excited, very thankful to those folks for helping us make this possible. Um, and some updates, some places to follow on Twitter. Uh, you've got Stathlete's um, Twitter handle there and Megan's. And so those are really good places to follow along. Um, let's see, I see there's a little bit um, in the Q&A. And before I turn it over to Brendan to do a little bit more with the data, um, I will try and answer those. So. Uh, Mark asks, has Rotman looked at incorporating sports performance components in its program? Uh, and I must say, I don't know the answer to that. I would assume um, that since Megan is involved, that there probably is a sports performance or a sports analytics course there. Uh, maybe, Megan, are you around? Maybe she could answer that. Yeah, sorry, I'm here. Um, there's not a specific sports a course for that, but there's people that do their internship at sports places, including at athletes. And then as well, like a general technique that when you're looking for like wearables or dealing with big data sets, those are all included in different courses in different ways. So, I mean, it's valuable in terms of if you want that, um, you know, if that's like your goal, but at the same time, there's not a ton of sports specific programs, right. For, for at a, at a graduate level. 
Good, thank you. Uh, I'll take one more and then I'll give some time to, to Brandon here. But Connie asked, will attendees at today's conference be able to see the winning submissions later on? Uh, absolutely. Um, and so we intend to, to broadcast the uh, final presentations or the presentations by the finalists, uh, both in sort of the open uh, category, but also in the college and high school uh, category. Um, and those will be recorded and made available. Um, so let me stop there. I know I did see some more come in and we'll try to answer that. And I am going to turn it over to Brendan, who's going to talk a little bit more about the data. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Michael. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to give you guys a brief tutorial here, just a bit on how to load in the data and how to do some basic analysis in R. Um, so if you guys are all, if any of you are experienced coders, you might want to take a quick five or 10 minute coffee break. I wouldn't really be offended. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to walk through some beginner stuff here to hopefully get people started and get people into hockey analytics. Um, so the first thing we want to do when we when we start off in R is load in the data. And we do this by using this read CSV function here and um, adding in the, the link that we want to download our data from, from GitHub for this competition. And in order to do that, if you go to GitHub here and you go to the data file that you want, say if you want the Women's Olympics uh, 2022 play-by-play -play data here, um, you have a couple of options here. So uh, in this case here, if it says view raw, then you could just click this button. On some other cases, it'll have a raw button here to click. So if you click view raw, that'll give you the link up here that you want. And you could just copy that link and paste it in here where I have it already here. Um, so once you have that, you could load in the data. And um, after that, the next thing I want to do is load in this tidyverse package here. So tidyverse is kind of like a group of functions that are very, very helpful for both data cleaning, data analysis, and data visualization in R. Um, so I already have it installed. If you didn't yet, then you can just use this install.packages here to get that. Um, so yeah, so once you load in that, you can start using all of the cool things that Tidyverse has to offer. And first up, before I get into it, I'm just gonna quickly talk about this little percent, greater than percent here, which is called the pipe in R. Um, and basically this just means and then, and this is a feature of tidyverse that's very, very helpful. Um, so for example, here, I'm going to, I want to select just the event column here. And then I want to find all distinct events that we have in the, in the data to get like what type of events are available. So I'm gonna take our data set, the Olympic data here, which we can pull up here and just see everything that's available to us. Um, so I'm gonna take that data set and then I'm going to select the just the event column. And then I want to select all distinct events. So when I run that, you get that we have these eight events here, ranging from face-off wins to penalties. And um, if we weren't using this pipe here, what this code would look like is this, where we select the event column from the Olympic data here. And then we have to wrap it on the outside with distinct to get the distinct events. And both of these will give the same results, but for me, it just seems a lot easier to follow when you have this pipe here, kind of listing off what you do in order. Um, then another thing that we can do in R is use this filter function here, um, or that tidyverse allows us to do is use this filter function here. Uh, so for example, if we want to just get Natalie Spooner's passes, um, we can take our data, our Olympic data, and then just filter for events that are plays or plays are equal to passes in our data set. Um, then after that, we can filter down to just Natalie Spooner. So when we run that, you can see that we're just filtering down from 10,000 rows just down to 42. And if you look at this here, you can see we have this player name column and this event column, and all of them are Natalie Spooner's passes. Um, then on top of that, another really cool thing that you can do is use this mutate function here to create new variables or new columns. So say we want to find past distances now. Um, again, we can go back and take our data and filter for just passes. And then we can use this mutate function to create this past distance um, column here, which corresponds to this formula here, which is basically how you calculate the distance between two points. So if we do that, we can just run that and take a quick look here at our passes. And we can see that we have our our starting x-coordinates here by x-coord and y-coord. 
right, and then we have our ending coordinates here by x coordinate two and y coordinate two. Um, and then by taking these in into account, you can compute the distance for each of them as we have here. So then you can just uh, you like click on the column here, and that'll allow you to kind of see the the quickest or the the longest and shortest passes. Um, and beyond that, so say we want to go beyond that now and not just look at the same rows and columns, just subset it, but we would rather actually aggregate the data. So take all of our data and try to squish it down and like group it by player and maybe try to find the how many passes each player makes, for example. Then what we can do here is take our data and then filter down for passes. Then we can use this group by function, which allows us to set which columns we want to group the data by. Um, so for example here, say we just want to group by player, then we can do that. And then after we can specify this count function, which is just going to kind of take our all of our data here. So all of our Olympic data, and it's going to just group it down to one row per player. Um, and that row will include the count as we specified here. So we can go to pass counts here and we can see we have all, all of the players here and this column N, which corresponds to the counts. So you could order that here and see who made the most and least passes in our data set. Um, and there's a lot of different cool functions you can do in terms of aggregating data. Uh, unfortunately, I, I just have a few minutes here, so I can't really dive into it. But yeah, yeah. If, if you guys look that up online, there's a lot of cool things you can do with that. Then the last thing I wanted to touch on here is just um, plotting the data. Uh, so here, I, I created this function here that I'm going to add to our GitHub later on called, uh, called plot rank. So if you take a look here, I have this function plot rank R. Um, and this includes basically everything you need to plot a rank in the background of, um, of a ggplot object in R. So ggplot is the main way that we use, or the, the best way to visualize data in R. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna specify ggplot for our data. So say for this example, I wanna plot Natalie Spooner's passes. Um, then to add in plot rank, you could just wrap this ggplot um, argument here in that. And with ggplot, you want to add pluses when you add anything additional. So like rather than using the pipe, we're just going to add a plus here. And then we can add in whatever we want. So we can add in like just points. So say we want to do shots, we can use geom point. Um, say here for passes, we want to use geom segment, which allows us to plot out lines. Um, so when I run this code here, we can see that this geom segment here um, is going to have these specified aesthetics, as we call them, with the x coordinate being equal to our x coord, the ending x coordinate being um, x coord two, and same with y coord and y coord two. Um, then we can color it, say, by whatever we want. Say we want to color it by situation type, we can do that. Um, and then we have some other specifics here that can add in, make it a look, make the data look a bit more fancier, or make the, the plot look a bit more fancier. Um, so then with that, we get this plot here. So we can see that I have that, that rank in the background that I mentioned with this plot rank function here that we sourced in. Um, then the geom segment here basically plots all of Natalie Spooner's passes here with a little arrow to show what direction they're going in. And yeah, this is just a basic situation or a, a basic example here about how to use ggplot. Um, there's a ton of different cool things that you can do with it. But um, yeah, I think just since we're, we have limited time here, I can't really dive into it too deeply. Um, but with that, hopefully that helps you just get an overview about the, the things you can do in R and um, all of the cool tools available to you. Um, I'm also gonna add in a little tutorial to the GitHub just on some basics that help me with tracking data working in the big data bowl. Um, I don't dive too deeply into it, but just it's just a couple of pointers to get you started as well. Um, so that should be up sometime later today. And uh, yeah, with that, I'll pass it over to Pascal, I believe. Sure, yeah. Um, we are running low on time. I just wanted to mention um, that I did just post a tutorial on the GitHub about how to join the tracking and play-by-play -play data because there are quite a few files. Um, so here's just kind of a practical example to do just that. So you can peruse that at your own leisure. Um, and I think I'll be holding office hours. So if you have any specific questions, you can we can connect at that time. Um, 
yeah, that's all I have. So <laughs> that 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 is that is great, and thank you both for doing that. I think that's um, some really nice tools to help folks get started. Uh, unfortunately, I think I was going to give my students homework on some of that joining Pascal. So maybe I'm not going to do that anymore <laughs> since you've given them the, the solutions to that. Um, we have a couple of minutes. Uh, if folks have questions, um, you can go ahead and put those in the Q&A. Um, and those can be questions on the competition in general um, or on the things that Brendan and Pascal uh, just talked about. And while we're doing that, I'll just um, point out in the panel last night, we were talking about working with tracking data, um, you know, that we had some commentary there about the tools to use. Um, and I love the fact that sort of naturally, Brendan picked R uh, and Nick Juan was using Python last night. And Pascal, I'm guessing that what you put up was Python. Is that right? Yeah, that's Python. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's great um, that, that, that there is obviously a variety of tools that, that can be used there. Uh, again, questions for these folks? Go ahead and type it in the Q&A there uh, at the bottom of the, the, the Zoom screen. Uh, excellent. Um, we have a question from uh, CM, uh, which might be uh, Carly Martke uh, there. And the question is, uh, if we find errors in the tracking data, uh, for example, players being listed as six instead of 16 or 26, uh, is a way to submit those corrections to staff leads so that others don't have to struggle through them? Um, and I guess maybe that's a question for Pascal. Sure. Yeah, definitely. I would love to make this data better. So, <laughs> um, yeah, maybe if you want to like submit an issue or a pull request on that uh, repo and we can talk about it, that'd be, that'd be great. Yeah, I think that would be a really great addition um, to to the repo would be to add some of the things that people find as they go. Um, so that would be great. Uh, yes, and it is indeed CM is indeed Carly. Um, OK, uh, we've got a couple questions here. I think we'll get to one or two of these. Uh, and then we'll get to our next speaker. Uh, and so Marshall asks, is there anywhere on the Big Data Cup site that mentions the goal theme this year is special teams? Um, that's a good question. Um, if there isn't, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll put it there and we'll make sure that that gets there. Um, so thank you for that. Um, Mike asks, uh, and this will be for Brandon and Pascal, uh, what public resources uh, would you both recommend for those who are new to projects like this? Um, I, I guess I could go on that one. Um, I, I think like, well, the main thing is Google, like Google, when you're learning how to code or, and you're, <laughs> You don't really, you can't really figure something out. Like usually just copy pasting the error into Google. Usually you get like three or four stack overflow answers. Um, so that, that's the main thing. It's just as you're running into issues, just solving it, just always going to Google. Like don't, don't spend too much time trying to figure it out yourself. Um, then in terms of other resources to kind of get into this type of stuff, um, I think for me, like if you're planning on using R and specifically that tidyverse type of stuff I mentioned, I don't have any specific in mind, but I think if you just look up like tidyverse tutorials or um, the, the stuff that I'm gonna post on the tr on uh, my little tutorial about the tracking data, um, the things that I mentioned there. So I talk about GG animate um, and using the nest and map functions in R for data cleaning. Um, if you look those up online, like just look up tutorials for those, I'm sure you should get a few that pop up as well. Yeah, and I guess to specify like into kind of more ideas uh, beyond the technical aspect. 
yeah, just take a look at what's like what people have already done with uh, tracking in other sports, tracking in hockey, events in other sports, events in hockey, um, and kind of get a look at like what's already been done so that we're not all reinventing the wheel together. I think that would probably make your project a lot stronger. Yeah, then actually that brings up another good point too, is um, you could also like borrow ideas from other sports as well. Um, so our project last year for the Big Data Cup was based off of um, a paper from basketball uh, by some very, very, very smart guys. So. Um, if you look into other sports, there's a lot of cool ideas that haven't been applied yet in hockey, um, especially since tracking data is brand new. So if you're able to take one of those ideas and apply it, that, that could be a really cool project as well, if you find something cool. Um, that's great. Um, we're at the end of our time, but thank you again, Brendan and Pascal, uh, for doing that and for... Um, uh, all your work in terms of preparation of these data, as well as those tutorials, that is uh, tremendous. Um, okay, I see there are still a couple of questions. We'll try to answer those um, offline, uh, but we need to get moving with our uh, next speaker. And so our next speaker is Peter Flynn. Uh, Peter was a creator, editor, and podcaster. For